Welcome back to a new video and another workout. As you see, we have the blocks out. We have them all set up. I don't have my shoes on yet, but we are pretty much ready to start training. So the goal today is to hit a heavy double in the snatch to do probably like 145 in the block clean and jerk and really to feel out these both, uh, both of these movements. If I'm feeling good after, then um, I'll do some back squats and just some triples like I did last week. Um, I'm moving these up a little bit, I guess, sooner. I think last week I did the block work on Thursday. A lot of it at this point of the, the calendar year is kind of based on temperatures. If I have a day where it's nicer, I'm going to be out in the shed, then I already have the blocks out. So I had these out from last Thursday, I think, when I uh, did my previous session. So it just seemed like the thing to do today. My um, after squats, I might do some other stuff. I might do some snatch push press. We'll kind of have to see how I'm feeling. Mostly uh, my right wrist has been kind of bothering me yesterday and today. It actually feels pretty decent right now, which is um, interesting. I haven't done anything particular with it other than train yesterday, which is obviously not going to be <laughs> helpful for it. But I also did some um, like gripper. Like I just have a forearm gripper. I did that just a couple times. Um, not really enough to like fatigue myself, but that might have been um, helping to loosen up as well. I think a lot of the, the wrist issue that I had was if you remember me talking about my forearm and kind of the Tommy John tendon area getting tight for like a week. I think that getting tight resulted in my wrist being in a more compromised position and just put more strain on that side. Uh, weirdly enough, it hasn't really impacted my lifts um, at all. And the only lift where I really noticed like the, the wrist being an issue is actually on front squats, which is my left side dips down. So not even any issue with my right. It's always my left side that wants to tip and drift forward. Um, which is probably some other issue that I don't really care to, to fix at this point. But heavy block snatches, um, block doubles. I would like to hit a heavy double. Maybe, you know, if everything went perfect, I would get up to 120. Uh, but that would be really close to my best uh, snatch double from the high blocks ever, which is 125, um, which isn't like a true bang-bang double. It was more of a cluster, but still like a very heavy percentage um, at any point of my lifting. And uh, for the block clean jerks, I don't really have a specific number. If I got to 145, I'd probably be pretty satisfied with that. Um, the block cleans just always feel so difficult. So anything above 140 feels like 190 kilos. But um, as far as back squats go, uh, we'll just have to see how I'm feeling. Um, as I move with those, I would like to do triples like I did last week and potentially um, progress up, like do that five kilo jumps each time. That I like that as well. And... Um, yeah, it's not really much else to talk about other than to, to get to it. But I've been warming up, uh, warming up out here for a little bit. And by warming up, I mean just playing a lot of chess on my phone before uh, touching the bar a little bit. But nothing really is super achy. I was mostly worried about my wrist, but it seems to be loosening up now. I'm sure I'll start to feel it as I start to train. But um, with straps and whatnot, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, clean jerks might be a little bit more of an issue. If they start bothering me too much, then... I'll probably dial those back and maybe just do pressing or um, something that's a little bit easier um, on that, but back squats and whatever should be fine. I don't know if I'll do um, any pulling today. I probably should um, because I didn't do, I guess I did like technically some clean pulls in the complexes yesterday. Um, and it'll be a good, if I do some pulls from the ground, it'll be a good excuse for me to move the blocks out of the way. So I'm not uh, tempted just to do block snatches every day because that is probably the most fun you can have in <laughs> weightlifting just high block snatches. Um, and I certainly don't need to be doing them hyper frequently. I think once a week is more than more than enough with them. But um, yeah, so hopefully we hit a good number with that. And if we're cooking, hopefully we can add, you know, go up for maybe some singles with that and get up to maybe 125 at the most and do it without, you know, missing it 18 times before I do it. But, you know, that's just a life I live. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting into the groove of the high block and high hang work and kind of just getting the feel of that like full extension and the extension and the pull with my arms kind of timing that up you know, as that gets timed together my lifts feel better and i'm doing better lifts and it's you know the timing and everything's good so just continually continually try to reinforce that and really the best way to reinforce it is to work with a heavier weight because that's where it becomes challenging like i'm going to do 80 kilos good enough every single time where i'm not going to feel any issues but it's right where you know, weight's heavy enough. So once I'm like above 110, 115 in that area where I have to, you know, really think about the lift more, at least try a lot harder and have to do it a lot um, better technically to do a good lift. If I just did all my lifts at 80 or 90 kilos, then they would look good, but uh, certainly wouldn't be getting any stronger or being able to tolerate heavy weights. But enough meandering, enough 
procrastination, time to warm up and to attack these weights. But that being said, I'll talk to you all at the end of the video. Intel-based PCs are shipped. Well, that session went pretty good, and I was really nervous uh, initially with some of the snatches, how I kind of had like makey misses, and then I had that double miss at 105 where I missed both the reps. But I was really happy to obviously come back and make that double, then the double 115, and then to make 125 on my first attempt. Uh, I didn't want to try anything more than that just because the 125 felt really heavy and I made it on the first one so I, I kind of wanted to keep that momentum into the clean jerks. I felt pretty nasty going into clean jerks and a lot of some of that was the wrist because nothing really bothered me wrist wise on the snatches um, but on the cleans it certainly wasn't too comfortable but I was able to build up as you saw to 145 and the 145 was extremely difficult my elbows touched my knees at the bottom of the clean and I had to bounce like 42 times to stand up with it. Uh, but despite the clean being that difficult, I was honestly really happy with the jerk. I was able to get it in a good position. It was a little bit ahead that you know I had to step forward with it, but I was able to get lower with it. And really, I really felt like my arms were stable. I'm sure there was some wobbling and whatnot, but it wasn't like I caught it on a bent arm and really had to like fight to extend as I'm going forward. Like I was up with it, it was in front of me, 
but it was more so just trying to get it to pull it back. But it wasn't so much like trying to, you know, extend my arms fully, which um, I was really happy with. And obviously, if I could get it back a little more, it would have made it, you know, much better jerk. But just with how difficult the clean was to be able to complete the jerk after, really happy about that. And the cleans themselves, even though like the 145 felt pretty nasty, um, the ones leading up to that, so the 70, 110, and 130, felt decent enough. Um, I definitely felt like I could have gotten my elbows faster, and that was kind of exposed on that heaviest uh, clean where my elbows were kind of getting crashed down. But that's kind of just the nature of doing block cleans. They just kind of smash me no matter how well I do the wrap or how um, strong I am at any given time. They just always kind of, <laughs> I just kind of had to dive under the bar, which is good for like the commitment because you don't have a lot of time to, you know, think about that you're going under. You just kind of have to try to extend as hard as you can and just immediately start trying to dive under the bar. And I think a lot of the, the crash that I get from block cleans is just from the way I'm built. It's just always going to be a difficult movement for me to do. It's not really going to be something that's super precise, but really with them and kind of with the snatch is a similar thing. I'm just trying to finish the pull and then trying to just extend and pull under as hard as I can. So just trying to be fast underneath. Um, and hopefully it'll be something that will, you know, get a little bit better with time, but the snatches are definitely the bigger focus of a day like this. And the cleans um, from the blocks aren't even so much the focus. It's um, more so the fact that it makes the clean really difficult. So then it makes the jerk more difficult as a result. It's kind of like doing a clean front squat jerk. You do it to make the jerk more difficult to simulate doing a heavier clean. This simulates me doing like a PR clean, which is how difficult the clean was, and then still being able to do um, a jerk after, which is really good. And obviously, you know, no best-selling clean jerk, which is good, of course. And um, I'm not going to do squats or anything because as I was going through the clean jerks, I was thinking like, well, if these like go really well, I'm not really going to be able to squat or like I'd pull fine. I, you know, do pulls with whatever weight I want to. But with squats, I was like, I'm probably not going to squat that well. It's already a little bit after 9 o'clock at night. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do tomorrow? Like, am I going to, you know, squat again tomorrow? Like, I'm probably not going to feel that great for the weightlifting movements. And I kind of need to take a light day for my wrist if um, I can manage it, if I can force myself to. But I was like, well, I'm going to push the squats and the pulls until tomorrow. Because at worst, like, I'll just come in and just squat and pull and be able to do a lot of work with that. At best, if like my wrist and stuff is feeling good, I would like to do some snatch balances or something in that realm, snatch push press or something. Uh, but I'm not going to necessarily hold myself to it because if my wrist is feeling kind of nasty, it'll be kind of a good day to just not do um, anything overhead like that. What I'm going to do um, at the end of my session now is just some biceps, triceps, and some shoulders. I think I've kind of mentioned this, but I've been doing a lot more um, tricep stuff. I think I mentioned like doing the tricep extensions um, with the cable and that being kind of a good ab, ab exercise, but I'm trying to just do more direct work for my arms, whether it be biceps, uh, triceps, of course, shoulders has always been a consistent thing um, to do, and just trying to do everything I can to improve the lockout and you know all the lifts, but I think it will just help in general to just have those two areas just be stronger. Uh, today, we'll be focused on just getting a pump and less about um, adding any weight just because I'm already kind of tired and I just kind of want to do something that's easy while I can watch a video, um, which is bodybuilding. <laughs> bodybuilding is very easy to do, which is why you can throw it at the end of a session and still get a good um, pump from whatever. You just have to continually do an exercise until you feel it with enough of a load. You know, if I'm doing this with maybe the two and a half kilo plate and doing curls, I'm going to have to do, you know, 200 curls before I really feel it in my bicep. But the barbell is nice in that regard is it's a good enough load, especially for curls, um, but even for tricep extension and even for pressing if you're just, you know, doing a bunch of reps with it. So I'll probably cycle through those, do, I don't know how many of each, but just kind of just keep working my biceps until they're too fatigued and then go to triceps and shoulders. Uh, my biceps will definitely fatigue first. Uh, my triceps probably won't get too much fatigue and I'm not worried about burning them out necessarily because I did quite a lot of work with them. I think yesterday I did some tricep, either yesterday or the day before. Um, I did quite a bit of tricep work, but the biceps are definitely like generally weaker than my triceps, but it's also a muscle that should be kind of weaker just because they're smaller and it's just, I, at least I think it should be weaker relative to your triceps, but it just kind of depends on the exercise too, the leverages that you have for it. I feel like most biceps exercises are just more difficult to do as far as just a leverage standpoint and a lot of tricep exercises, even if you are doing them pretty strict, you do um, get other muscles like your rear delts and back, um, traps and everything 
involved a little bit with it so you could always load a little bit more even if you're just doing straight um, push downs or something but do some of that get in get some food and get to bed but really happy with this session obviously i'm really excited to make the 125 on the first one that's obviously an improvement from the last couple times i've been doing it from the blocks and of course the goal is to be able to do more and potentially you know hit a, a pr double from the blocks that would be really nice but obviously i have to build a consistency with the doubles building up um, i haven't really been doing doubles as um, you may have noticed with these block sessions so i'm glad to at least introduce them back because it's just a really easy way to accumulate a lot of snatch volume since you're not pulling from the floor you're just trying to dive under the bar which is uh, a very important thing of weightlifting and for some, for whatever reason i like it with snatches but for cleans it just feels horrendous but um yeah a good good productive session i'm gonna pump my arms up i'm gonna go and eat some food also with the um, athletic tape what it does, I put it on my, I put it on both wrists, no matter what, whether I have um, pain on one wrist or both, which typically I'm no, only have it on one side if I do, but I put it on both just because it feels weird to only have it on one side. But when you are using straps like I was for snatches, it's nice to have them on because I can't really have my wrist straps on and not be in the way of the straps, no matter what kind of strap style I use, because it's kind of in that same area. So athletic tape is actually really, really nice for that regard because I don't think it provides a ton of support. But what it does is, at least in my mind, it gives me that kinesthetic feeling of like, it feels like I'm getting support. Because like right now I can fully extend my wrist and not have like any resistance from the athletic tape at this point. But in my mind, like it feels like, because I can feel that compression, I feel like it is um, providing some support. When you initially put it on, it definitely does, but it loosens pretty quick during um, the session. I bought some pre-wrap as well. So right now I'm just putting the athletic tape on my skin, but as you sweat, it comes off pretty easily. And if you're not a baby, then you just yank it off and take a little bit of hair with it. But I bought some pre-wrap as well, um, because that will help with the sweat and potentially keep the athletic tape tighter for a little bit longer if I'm doing work with the straps and I want to have it on. Um, I usually leave it on when I got the wrist wraps on after. And typically, um, I don't like doing that because when you start to sweat, then the wrist wrap over top the athletic tape will start to slide around and not provide as much support. I had that issue the other day where I felt like my wrist was not necessarily giving out, but just not having the regular support that it would have from the wrist wrap uh, because it was sliding around and athletic tape underneath was sliding a little bit on my wrist. So definitely something to be aware of, but thankfully when I'm out here in the shed, I'm not really sweating a ton, even though it was about 70 degrees today, it's pretty cool out in here. But when I was at the gym the other day and it will be something that happened in the summer, like you kind of have to account for sweat being in the way of different things, whether you're you know working out hard or not, if it's just a hot temperature. But I'm going to get my arms pumped up, go in, try to eat as much food as I can, and then go to bed. But good day, good training, and time to move on to the next one. But I'll talk to you all in the next video, and have a great day. Peace.